View components allow us to split our UI into independent and reusable pieces. Take for example a form input. We might commonly use an input in various locations around our application. Instead of defining an input with all this markup multiple times within our application, we can convert this logic into a component and then reuse this component in various locations around our application. There are many reasons why we might want to encapsulate our logic into a component. For example, with our form input component, first off, it's going to allow us to write less markup throughout our application, so that way we're not writing the same code over multiple times. Updating the look, feel, and even validation of our inputs also becomes less challenging since we can alter all of this from a single entry point which is going to be our component. In this video we're going to learn how to create a simple yet highly reusable base input component using Vue's best practices. So let's get started. To begin let's first create a new component called baseInput.View. We'll be able to use this component for various input types such as text, email, number, and password. Within our component, let's create some markup for our input. We'll keep this simple by just having a label and an input itself. For the content of the label, we'll make this dynamic by allowing for a prop to be passed on the component. For this, we're going to need to define props using the define props macro, and we'll call this prop label. We'll set the type of this prop to a string and then a default value to an empty string. Then using the must test syntax, we'll output this prop to our label tag. With that created, back here inside of our parent component, which is our app.view file, let's import and define our base input component. Within this parent component, we're also going to want to create a variable so that way we can capture the user's input from our base input component. To do this, we're going to need to create a new variable first off, and we're going to make it reactive by setting equal to a ref with the initial value of an empty string. Then on our base input component, we want to add a directive called vModel, which is going to sync up the component and our newly created variable. So that way, when a user types in the input field, that value is going to be assigned to our variable. And to demonstrate how this works for this video, I'm also going to output our ref to the template as well. Although we added the vModel directive to our component, our variable and our input that lives within the component are currently not synced together and we're not capturing any user input. To understand things more clearly, let's take a look under the hood of what vModel is doing. When this directive lives on an input directly, it binds a value attribute to whatever we pass into the vModel, in this case the first name variable that we defined. It also listens for an event called input, which is fired when the input is updated. This is setting the first name variable to the new value via the event.target.value of our input. When using vModel on a component, things change slightly. Instead, the attribute is now called model value, and it's listening for a custom event which is emitted from within the component called update colon model value. Within this emit, we receive the value from our input again via the event.target.value, which is then set to our binded model value attribute of first name. Now really quick before we continue on with the video, if you are enjoying it be sure to scroll down and drop a like on it as this really does help out the channel. Back within our base input component, let's define an additional prop for our model value, which is the variable called first name we set our vModel directive to within app.view. We'll set the type of this prop to a string, and by default we'll also set this to an empty string. Then we want to set the value of this input to our model value prop. We also need to define an event listener within our input called input, and each time this is fired we want to emit a custom event called update colon model value. And we also want to send along the event.target.value of our input. For this component we'll be handling our emitting directly within the template so we don't need to register this emit. However, if you do want to take this component a step further, feel free to add some validation prior to emitting back to the parent. Remember, you're also going to need to define the define emits macro and register this emit in order to use it within the script tag of this component. Now we should have successfully set up two-way binding with our component and our variable. And we can see this if we type into our input, the variable that we outputted earlier within our template is now in sync with the value within our input. Currently, if you want to change the type of our input to a number, password, or email, or even add a class, we have to change the type attribute or add a class directly within our component. This makes our component less reusable since the type and class is going to be statically assigned within that component itself. To make things more dynamic and allow for different types and classes to be added, we can use something called $adders. 
This is going to assign any attributes that we define on the parent to where we specify inside of the component. Now within our component, we just need to bind the dollar sign adders to wherever we want to specify these attributes to be added, which in our case is going to be to our input. With that added, now within our app.view, we can define attributes on this component and view is going to assign them to where we specified, which is going to be our input. To round out this component, we might not always want to display a label. Right now, the label is always being rendered into the DOM. To resolve this, we can add an additional type to our label prop and add boolean. Instead of defaulting this prop to an empty string, we'll change this to false. Then we need to add a vif directive to our label tag to only render this into the DOM if the label prop has been passed since by default the label prop will be false. Alright, that's going to wrap it up for this reusable form input component. Hopefully you'll now be able to start incorporating these types of components into your application. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.